So Andrea writes, as a Canon M50 user, it will be great to see the Sigma Trio uh, for crop sensor lenses, the 16mm, the 30mm, and the 56mm. All three of them are f1.4. Uh, would they work in Catalyst Browns? This clip right here is a stress test on the uh, Sigma 1835 um, for both stabilization and autofocus. Oh, oh, this is all like Madrid. Yeah. I showed the unstabilized footage, but the unstabilized footage is actually shot in full frame mode. So uh, you can see the difference uh, in stabilization ability, but I didn't stabilize the full frame version. Now, the question though is, if you were to take a native E-mount lens, um, would it not stabilize? Now, here's the thing. Um, this right here, 16 to 50 uh, optically image stabilized lens, which is made for uh, crop sensor cameras. And in crop mode, it stabilizes just fine. But in full frame mode, you'll see the vignetting and it just won't stabilize. It'll show me the stabilized option in Catalyst Browns, but it won't actually do any real stabilization. My assumption, is that uh, you would run into a similar scenario with the Sigma Trio. All three of these Sigma Trio lenses are uh, small, they're very light. So if you were to place them on a gimbal, right, maybe a Moza P or maybe even a uh, Zion Crane M2 or a Fiutech G6 Plus, any of those small gimbals that you can put into your bag, you'd be able to, uh, from what I understand, the, the, the whole setup, the lens and the body together combined would be within the load capacity of the gimbal itself. So you can run that ISO low, you can drop down the aperture as well, uh, and you don't even have to worry about catalyst browse. Now, this brings to me a question. So for example, on this camera right now, I'm on a 16 millimeter full frame using the Tokina 11 to 16 via the Metabones adapter. Now I put the Metabones adapter back in green mode, not advanced mode, so I don't get autofocus or anything like that. Uh, and the reason is so that when I use the um, clear image zoom, uh, I get the option to do so. So right here, enable cl clear image zoom and I can crop in. So this is at one, this is a full frame, then 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 4, and 5. Now, generally speaking, this 1.5x crop in clear image zoom via the full frame sensor is not as good quality as say if I were to go to um, uh, if I were to go to crop mode itself so check this out so it looks almost identical right um, but do you notice a difference right now I'm actually in crop mode and I'll show you how I'm cro if I am in crop mode then I can go in even further <laughs> <laughs> so now the question though is, did you notice a difference between this and this? My assumption is not really. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, this is 1.5x clear image zoom as opposed to what I was before. And here's what I'll do. I'm going to put them side by side. Take a look.
technically there is a difference between the two of them if you pixel peep. Uh, but uh, if you didn't notice the difference, then that's great. But here's the thing though, even if you go 1.2x in full frame mode on a crop sensor lens, stabilization is gonna be tricky. When it stabilizes, it's gonna be stabilizing around the vignetting area. So if there is any vignetting showing up on screen, it's gonna it's gonna come up and this here's an example of that this is one of the perks of using the metabones in green mode not advanced mode is that it'll enable stabilization even for crop sensor lenses um, uh, through catalyst browse however if you are willing to go manual focus through the metabones adapter not the mc11 sigma but the metabones adapter turn it into green mode in my case i have the metabones 4 you can get it for relatively cheap off of ebay uh, and use a crop sensor lens so long as you're manual focusing, then uh, you'll get gyro stabilization across both. And so that's the key difference. But you have to be you have to make sure that the uh, you're not getting any vignetting even in full frame mode. The example that you chose was the Tamron 17 to 70 f 2.8, which is similar to this guy right here, which is a 17 to 55 uh, f 2.8 for Canon EFS. Um, the difference, now both this lens as well as the Tamron is the equivalent when put on a crop sensor lens to something like a 24 to 105 on full frame f 4. So, uh, but what happens if I use this in full frame mode with a little bit of vignetting, take a look. This is what you get. You get uh, the full on vignette, doesn't matter how far, doesn't matter if you, even if I go full 55 mil on uh, full frame sensor, it's still not gonna get the uh, full coverage. Now, if I go into a uh, clear image zoom and I go to 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3, 1.4, uh, I mean, I'm at 1.4 now, and so I might as well just go into crop mode, <laughs> right? Uh, as opposed to 1.5, right? That only then will I lose, uh, will all of the vignetting disappear. This is a 1.5x crop. If I go back to 1.4 and then I zoom in all the way at uh, 55 mil, and uh, I go back to 1.4, 1.3. I could get away with uh, 1.3 X crop. Um, but again, for all effective purposes, what you want to do is you want to use this in crop mode. So if we go back to crop mode, so this is crop mode for this lens. Um, and now this lens actually has um, uh, image stabilization built into it. Uh, I believe it's off right now, but if I were to, actually it was on, <laughs> now it's off, right? And so now it's on, but let's take a look, right? If I were to stabilize this footage, so this is gonna be a walking test while stabilization is on at arm's length. So just a note, when you import footage into Catalyst Browse um, using footage captured on the Metabones uh, and then you bring it into the computer. So this is the clips that I just did. So uh, regardless of which one I do, because it's captured on the Metabones, uh, what's gonna happen is uh, I say stab stabilize and it's gonna give me this uh, warning sign. This clip does not contain any lens metadata, which can result in incorrect stabilization. Do you wish to continue? Yes, because it did not pass the data onto the uh, through because I'm in green mode, I'm actually able to stabilize it. And so as such, when I play back, uh, it gives me a stable footage. So uh, that's just something to note when you're recording something like this. Crop sensor lenses are best used when designed for crop sensor uh, cameras. Now it goes counter to what I'm doing right here right now, uh, which is using a crop sensor lens at its wide angle to get that whole Canadian focal length. Uh, so I can make my small office nook look bigger than it actually is. Um, but at the same time, it's intended to be best used in crop sensor. If you use the metabolism in green mode, you get stabilization, but you lose uh, uh, autofocus. However, 
Uh, it gives me a wider field of view. I don't have any other ultra wide angle full frame lens. This is what I got, so this is what I'm using. Something like this, a, uh, uh, a Canon EFS 17 to 55, um, almost like a, a similar, it's really, a, it's more like a 28 to 82 on a full frame, but add clear image zoom to that becomes like a 28 to 105 plus, uh, what's 88 times one and a half, 132 millimeter at the, at the long end with clear image zoom in crop sensor mode. So that's like an advantage that uh, clear image zoom gives you in crop mode using crop sensor camera. So you talk about the 70, 17 to 70 Tamron, use it in crop mode, you'll get the stabilization and you'll get extra reach and 17 millimeter on the short end is actually uh, not bad. If you have a standard zoom, you're looking for versatility, I would almost always opt for crop sensor. If I had the Sony a7C, I would probably consider getting the 17 to 70 just for travel so that uh, it's light, it's easy to use, and uh, I don't have to worry about a lot of weight. I did the Sigma 24-105 on a trip and man, that thing was heavy. If you're using a crop sensor zoom, and you want to use stabilization, which means you're running that shutter speed up one over 60, one over 200. But then you're also going to be running into the issue of like, how well does it perform in low light? Last night, um, what I did was I took the Sigma 1835 um, with my son um, just to go walking around the apartment complex and also to give this a run in extreme low light. By extreme low light, I'm talking throughout the walk, I was at anywhere between uh, at the lowest, maybe 6,400, 3,200 for a moment, typically 12,800 and uh, 25,600 ISO while using Catalyst Browse. And this is basically what I left off with. I just kind of went through editing this vlog and uh, one of the thoughts that I was having as I was editing all this is that, all right, so you saw the low light video and in that low light video, uh, I did in the areas that I was running the ISO up really high, I did do some noise reduction passes. But then the question that I had is, what if I were to do the same exact thing, but in a situation where there's adequate amount of light? keeping the shutter around one over six, one over 160. How would that perform? How would that look? So this is the result of that. In conclusion, this feature right here is probably something that no other camera in the market has, allowing the value here, allowing you to take something that's already small that nobody would really pay attention to and to be able to achieve this gimbal-like footage without the use of a gimbal be totally inconspicuous while giving you both full frame and crop sensor options at the same time, um, allowing you to adapt any lens. And one of the beauty one of the beautiful things about a wide angle lens is that you really don't need autofocus, right? So long as you've got a distance scale, something like the Tokina 11 to 16, uh, and you're using the metabolism in green mode where uh, you'll get uh, full frame mode and image stabilization. Um, and you can just pay attention to the distance scale. Like you really don't need autofocus on that regard. So, and I feel like what I was able to achieve here without the use of a gimbal, I couldn't do that with any other camera on the market. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you soon.